Hello, and welcome to week number eight pre-college math. My name is Mr. Shanklin. I am your teacher for this semester. Let's get going. I don't think too many of you guys are going to have troubles with this week because um, we're basically um, graphing and, and solving linear equations, which is, well, not even linear equations, just writing, writing equations in slope intercept form, point slope form, and being able to graph those out. Let's talk a little bit about last week. Last week we were talking about solving uh, linear inequalities. Uh, if I was going to solve this problem, I solve it just like a regular equation, except I do have that inequality in there. The only time that that inequality is has to come to play is when I'm done and I have to graph an answer, or if I multiply or divide by a negative number, I've got to flip the inequality over. So the first thing here, I'm going to just multiply through here. So that gives me 9 minus 3x. Here, I still have 4 minus 2x. I want to get my variables on the same side. So I'm just going to add 3x to both sides. So I'm left with 4 plus x is less than 9. I'm going to subtract off 4. So I end up with x is less than 5. If I had to graph it out, this is an open dot at 5. And I'm graphing everything to the left of it. When I have an absolute value, I'm going to rewrite it as um, probably one single problem. But remember, it has to be the same, or you have to have positive and negative. And then I'm just going to solve. So I'm going to subtract 9, but I'm going to subtract it from both sides. So this gives me negative 21. It's greater than 2x, which is greater than 4. Then I'm going to divide through by 2, everything. Oh, I, this was 22, wasn't it? Uh, or, yeah, 20, 22. Uh, so this would be negative 11. Uh, this would be an x greater than 2. So my answer would be x is less than negative 11 and greater than 2 for that one. So absolute values, you want to rewrite it without the absolute value symbol in there and then solve. Now, when you have a quadratic, uh, trying to find, you know, graphing it is a little bit tougher because we have to find the value where, where it's true. So if I'm going to uh, do this problem, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides. So this becomes x squared plus 4x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 0. Then I'm going to factor this. This becomes x plus 5x minus 1 greater than or equal to 0. My, my values are going to be x equals negative 5 and x equals 1. So I make a number line out. I put those values in there. So I've got negative 5 here. I've got 1 here. Now I have to pick a point because it's either going to be everything shaded to the left and right of my numbers or everything in between. So I usually take 0. So 0 is right here, isn't it? So I take 0 and I plug it in here. Does it make the function true? If it does, I shade in between. If it's false, I shade outside. So I put 0 in here. 0 squared is 0, plus 0, plus 4. Is 4 greater than or equal to 9? 4 is not greater than or equal to 9, so this is a false statement. So I shade on the outside. Not too bad when you think about it. All right, so this week, we're going to be talking about linear equations and two variables, like y is equal to mx plus b. We also have, uh, this is called slope-intercept form, right? Hopefully you guys have seen this many, many times in your math careers. And we also have what is called y minus y1 is equal to slope x minus x1. This is called point slope form of the line. I'm sure some of you probably have seen this. So those are the two types of formulas that we're going to be dealing with tonight, slope-intercept and point-slope. Using slope. The simplest mental model for relating two variables is a linear equation in two variables, y is equal to mx plus b. And this is slope-intercept form. The equation is called linear because its graph is a line. In mathematics, the term line means straight line. So the line crosses the y-axis at b, 
or the y-axis at y is equal to b as shown in the figure below. So if you're graphing, and I, you know, if I have an equation that is y is equal to 2x plus 3, this is my slope, this is my y-intercept. So this is where it's going to cross the y-intercept. This is going to be the slope. So when we graph something in slope-intercept form, it's really easy. First thing you're going to do is you're going to graph the y-intercept, and from that point, you're going to graph the slope. So if, I'm, if I have an equation like this, let's say I have y is equal to 1 half x minus 4. This is my y-intercept. So this is my y-axis. This is my x-axis. So I always put my point on the y-intercept first. So I go down 1, 2, 3, 4. I put a point here. And then my slope is 1 half. So that means I go up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, and then I draw my line in. That is how we graph equations that are in slope-intercept form. The slope of a non-vertical line is the number of units the line rises or falls vertically for each unit of horizontal change left and right. Okay, so that's why when I did one half, I went up one over two, up one over two, up one over two. Because it's how, how far up do I go to how far over do I go. If it was negative, I would go down. Okay, negative slope goes down. A linear equation written in slope-intercept form has the form y is equal to mx plus b, where b is the y-intercept and m is the slope. Once you have determined the slope and the y-intercept of a line, it is relatively simple matter to sketch its graph. A vertical line okay, cannot be written in slope-intercept form. Okay, Why? Because the slope is undefined. So anytime we have a vertical line, whatever it goes through, so this goes through x equals 3, right? So my equation would be x equals 3. That is the equation of a vertical line. Anytime you have a vertical line, it will always x equals. So if I, if I said, hey, I want you to graph x equals 5, well, that is a graph. It's a vertical line that goes through 5. That is it. Sketch a graph of each linear equation, okay? So this is, I should, have, I should have put some graph paper on here, but I'll just sketch them out. So my first one, y is equal to 2x plus 1. My y-intercept is 1. My slope is 2. So I go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. Draw my line. That is my equation for y is equal to 2x plus 1. Now, y is equal to 2. Now, x equals is a vertical line. y equals a constant is a horizontal line. So if I go up to 2, draw a line horizontally, this is y is equal to 2. x plus y is equal to, oh, no, now they're trying to mess me up. So I'm just going to rewrite this as y is equal to negative x plus 2. Pretty easy, right? Just rewrite it in slope-intercept form, and then we can graph it. So I go up to 2. My slope is negative 1. So it should look something like this. So graphing equations, slope-intercept form, should be a very easy thing for you guys to do. Finding the slope of a line. The slope formula, and everybody should know this, it's the change in y over the change in x. A lot of time we'll just write it change in y over the change in x. It's the rise over the run. Or we could write it out in my formula form, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. If it gives it to me in a graphing form, you know, I just count up and over, rise and run. If it's just points, I use the point formula or the, the formula for a slope and I can find. So for example, here it says, find the slope of the line passing through each pair of points. I'm definitely gonna use the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 since they're just points. If it was graph, I wouldn't do this. So here, if I did this, this is, I call this x1, y1. Why the subscript 1? It's point 1. 
This would be x2, y2. This is the second point. So I would go 1 minus 0 over 3 minus negative 2. 1 minus 0 is 1. 3 minus, that's 5. So the slope that goes through these two points is 1, 5. Okay. So finding the slope should be fairly easy. I'll do one more. Okay, so here I've got 1, and sometimes I'll just draw an arrow. So I've got 1 minus 4 over 3 minus 3. Uh-oh, 3 minus 3, that's 0. I know anytime I have a 0 in the denominator, it's undefined. Undefined slope. Okay, now if I graph this out, guess what? 3, 4 is here. 3, 1 is here. If I connect them, it's a vertical line. Kind of makes sense, right? Because if the slope is undefined, it must be a vertical line. If you plot those two points and graph it out, sure enough, it is a vertical line. Now, if I wanted to find uh, slope when it's graphed out, okay, um, all I do is I pick two points that are on the graph. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes they'll give them to you, but I don't see any. This looks like a point here, and this looks like a point here. So one, two, three over one. So I'm going to say the slope is three over one, which is just three, right? And then the y-intercept is negative two. So it says find the slope and the y-intercept. I'm going to go with letter A. Slope is three. Y-intercept looks like it's at negative two there. Find the slope of this line. Well, it looks like it gives me a point way down here. <laughs> I don't know. That looks like negative two, negative two, negative nine. And it gives me a point way up here. It looks like two, one. All right, so I'm just going to use those two. So negative nine minus one over negative two minus two. All right, so that looks like negative 10 over negative four. Well, that's going to be a positive, right? So right away, I can cross out these two. <laughs> well, I could have crossed them out just by looking at the graph. Uh, so that looks like five halves for my answer. Letter D. Writing linear equations into variables. So this is point slope form of a line. If they give you a point and then they give you the slope, super easy to use this formula. So let's say they gave me a point. Let's say they gave me 2, comma 4, and they told me the slope of this equation is 1 half. And they want me to write an equation in point slope form. Super easy. The only places you put things are right here. This is where your point goes, and this is your slope. So my equation is going to be y minus 4 is equal to 1 half x minus 2. Done. That's why I love, I love point slope form of a line as long as they give you a point in the slope. Super easy to write the equation for that. So find the slope-intercept form of the equation of the line that has a slope of 3 and passes through the point 1, negative 2. Well, it's going to be y minus negative 2 is equal to 3x minus 1. Now, I usually don't leave a minus minus, so this would just be y plus 2 is equal to 3x minus 1. Okay, do not leave a minus, it just doesn't sit right. So just change it to plus. Parallel and perpendicular lines. Parallel lines are two lines that never cross. Perpendicular, they cross at a 90 degree angle. Okay, the slope of parallel lines is the same. So they have the same slope. So if they ask you to write an equation that's parallel to another one, you know that the slope has to be the same. Same slope. Perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. So if one line has a slope of like 1 half, then the opposite reciprocal would be negative 2 over 1. You flip the fraction, and you make it the opposite sign. That's why it's opposite reciprocal. Reciprocal means flip it. Opposite means opposite sign. So if it was positive, you'd make it negative. If it's negative, you make it positive. So now if we take a look here, it says two distinct non-vertical lines are parallel if and only if their slopes are equal. So if you have the same slopes, you have parallel lines. If the, if the slopes are opposite reciprocals, then you have perpendicular lines. It says find the slope intercept form of the equation of the lines that pass through the point 2, negative 1, and are 
parallel to uh, and it, like, oh parallel to and perpendicular to this equation okay all right so now i, I got to read the whole thing so it's going to be parallel and perpendicular to this line well first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to rewrite this thing so i've got negative three y is equal to negative two x plus five divide through by negative three so I end up with y is equal to 2 thirds x plus negative 5 thirds, which really doesn't make any difference. All I needed was a slope because if I want to do parallel lines and it goes through this point, then I just have to go y plus 1 is equal to 2 thirds x minus 2. That This equation would be parallel to this one because it has the same slope. Now, if I want to be perpendicular to this one that goes through this point, then I would use negative 3 halves as my slope because that is opposite reciprocal. So it would be y plus 1 is equal to negative 3 halves x minus 2. This line would be perpendicular and go through this point. Pretty good problem there. I like that. Practice problem, it says write the slope-intercept form of the equation of the line through the given point perpendicular to the given line. Okay, perpendicular to this line here. Well, I'm going to rewrite this thing. So this is negative 45y is equal to 9x plus 9. I'm going to divide through by negative 45. Ah. I don't really even care about this part. But this part, what is that, negative 1 fifth? So it wants to be perpendicular. So the perpendicular to this slope would be 5 over 1, or just 5. Okay. So now, if I want to write an equation that goes through this point, has this slope, I've got y plus 8 is equal to 5x plus 7. Now, lo and behold, I did it in point-slope form, but all my answers are in slope-intercept form. No biggie. I'm just going to multiply through here. So that gives me 5x plus 35, y plus 8, and I'm going to subtract off 8 from both sides. So I end up with y is equal to 5x, 35 minus 8 is 20, 27. So I would go with letter C. Hopefully this was all review material from, you know, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, those kind of things. Hopefully it um, jogged your memory about, what, you know, those things. And that's basically what pre-college is. We go through a lot of the material that you should have seen before, but we go through a lot at one time. I mean, if I was doing this in my Algebra 2 class, this would probably be a three, four, you know, five-week unit uh, talking about slope and y-intercepts, point-slope form, y-intercept form, being able to graph it. That, that's a lot of material that you go through, but hopefully this is just a, a review of all of that stuff. Hopefully I will see you guys on Monday at 12 o'clock until 1 for our main lesson. You guys have a great week. Bye.